Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of this game dev tutorial series. Today we're going to learn how to make a player character and move it across the screen. Without further ado, let's get started with the theory. There are multiple ways you can go to deal with player movements. You can tie them to a grid, or you can use a vector and allow smooth movements, strafing, inertia, etc. This is the technique we'll use today, as it's much more flexible and will be later used to deal with collisions. Monogame's coordinate system, although not uncommon in video games, might be confusing at first. The 0, 0 point is not on the bottom left corner of the window, as you would think, but on the top left. For instance, in order to go down, an object's y coordinate must increase, and the x coordinate must decrease if you want to go left. All of today's code will fit in one class the player class. It will have a texture variable with a little character image, a position vector to represent where to draw the texture on screen, a velocity vector to represent how to change the position vector over time, and finally, a speed float to determine how much the position vector will be affected by the velocity vector. Other than the constructor, the player object needs an update function called once per tick. Inside, we check if any of the arrow keys is pressed. For each key, we modify the velocity vector accordingly. If we want the player character to move, we will eventually need to link the velocity vector that we modify with the arrow keys to the actual player position and to the speed value. This is done after the key checks, where we add the velocity times the speed to the position vector. If we stick to that, Going diagonally by pressing two arrow keys at the same time will make the player move twice as fast. To prevent this from happening, we need to normalize the velocity vector, which means we prevent it from being bigger than one. At the very end of the update function, we set the velocity to zero. Otherwise, the player will keep moving even when no keys are pressed. The second and last function we'll need in this class is the drawing function. It cannot be any simpler because all we have to do is call monogame sprite batch to draw the defined texture at the coordinates set by the position vector. We're done with the player class. Before testing the game, don't forget to create a player variable and add it to the game, update it, and draw it. And piece of cake! You have now mastered smooth player movements. Like this, we're done with this tutorial. I might cover grid-based mechanics and movements in a later video, but I think the next one is going to be about collisions. I hope you've learned something, I'm trying to make this format as understandable as possible, so please leave a feedback if you have any, I'll respond to your comments if you need any help as well. See you in the next one guys!